உங்கள் லெஜண்ட் சரோனாவில் சம்மர் ஏசி மேலா சிறப்பு விற்பனை எதிர்ப்பு நிறைந்த பிசுபிசுப்பு இல்லாத சன்லாண்ட் ரீஃபைன் சன்ஃபிளவர் ஆயில் ஹண்ட்ரட் பர்சன்ட் ஸ்காலர்ஷிப்ல வேல்ஸ் யூனிவர்சிட்டில படிங்க ஹலோ மணிரத்னம் அண்ட் ஏஆர் ரஹ்மான் யூ யூ ஹவ் டன் திஸ் 30 years together and you've done this two part or together uh-huh. which seems uh-huh. like a bigger accomplishment 30 years just went by i mean we i don't realize that 30 years happened this was tougher <laughs> two parts were tougher the, the two parts were tougher like what what is this feeling rahman is it like a my god it's finally over is that the feeling or oh, like i wish there's a part 3 as people oh this one i think i hope there's a prequel <laughs> <laughs> everybody's asking this is there a part, another part i think maybe there'll be a prequel to the whole thing no rahman you never wanted to be in the movies at one point you just wanted to be this person in a band you know making albums and things like that because you you've told me you your influences were chick corea and all those people and now this person sitting next to you which drags you into the movies and here you are 30 years later or 31 years later do you ever look at him at times and say or his picture at times and say if not for you i would have been rocking the indie scene <laughs> <laughs> no i think uh, the biggest blessing i think so him masking and everything came together i think it i think it was like strange destiny because i when you look at it uh balachandra comes in he actually came before balachandra sir and then he said are we doing thula thula and then he suddenly came down are we doing another movie and I'm, i'm directing for mr balachandra and all the goodies came together so there was a credibility you know from the production house and you know india world's best director here <laughs> and guiding me and i was i know that i was in good hands and he said uh, even if this movie flops we'll do another one don't worry so he was like so kind <laughs> i didn't mean it i was <laughs> i was hoping it won't flop no he said no he didn't say flop he said even if it doesn't it doesn't do well we'll do another one so he was like assuring my mother and mother said like okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> no your you were doing thrida thrida with him first no i mean at any point of time sometimes you have few ideas right. you don't know which one will fall into place so, so i was trying to toying with both ideas and roja happened all of a sudden one day i got a call from kbz's office and so i went there and they wanted me to do a film so i mean i can't sell thrida thrida to kbz <laughs> so i had to shift to roja right so uh, so this plan is there in your mind and he suddenly calls you know what which movies of maniratnam had or had you seen till then were you a movie watcher at all i played for maniratnam with uh, mr l raja right. so uh, i didn't know because you know i uh, we just look at mr raja's face and we write the notes so i played for maniratnam then after it came out of uh, then i saw nayagan right nayagan actually saw nayagan in uh, you know put mr purushottam's house you know, there was the rhythm player so i used to go to sada and pushottam and so i saw nayakan and they were watching in this a pirated <laughs> version of it on a small you know like the nv300 video tech and it was fantastic the, you know the music and the kamalas and then i was like wow and then little did i know that i was working with this cousin sister right so she said said um, uh, my brother's movie is coming said, who's which brother mani ratnam said what <laughs> <laughs> and that's when i realized uh, you know they were related and then she he came for the leo coffee you know that we had a little celebration for that right then like naively i told him like please come to my studio check it out so you approached him first no i was just a casual invitation in a chat okay we were ja- sitting like this okay next to each other okay and so he was smiling i said where is he going to come <laughs> and then and then tirlo called me said hey money wants to meet you I said what yeah yeah he wants to meet you and then he came and listened to all the ideas So you took him to your studio. You know, just to clarify, the cousin sister you were working with was in the commercial uh, field, commercial, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's just to clarify. They that. were like real good friends. You know, we used to go hang out, you know, have we go to restaurants and you know, in the gang. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then yeah, yeah. So so you meet this man. You're sitting just like this. You take him to your little studio, and and you're playing with what like intention? Is it like just no, listen was, to what I have to say? I think I wasn't a. I was in a very strange mental situation, right? Past five years from I would build a studio or got my equipment, there was a kind of um, Zen mode where I felt like if I chase anything, it will go away from me. Right. So I was like this detachment mode. If it has to come to me, it will come to me. You know, like that mode. And so I was not even like wanting to like it, <laughs> even though my heart was going for it. I was like in this kind of a zone. and so he he came and listened to the songs and then he didn't turn up 
for like a couple of weeks. I said, what happened? You didn't like any of this? No, 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 wait, wait, he said. Then he said, I like this, I like this, I like that. I said, okay, that's great. It's the songs that you had composed on your own? Uh, no, I had made some tunes for what his stuff. Uh, for Trinidad, okay. You know, huh. uh, this was for Roja, right? Yeah, before Roja is when I met him, you know, actually. I just went to the studio, like he said. And there you go in. It's a tiny studio. I mean, right. I'm used to Prasad. Right. It's a massive one. Yeah. And he has a small studio that goes in and I go and see. There's a bench. There's not even a chair he can sit. There's a nice bench. And it is lesser than this room. And then he plays things that he has recorded before. Right. You know, he takes a tape from somewhere and then puts it and things like that. And the song was just unbelievable. I've I mean, not heard something like that in, in here. And it was just mesmerizing, you know. So, uh, it, and then I asked him, can I take a, can you give me a demo tape? You know, so... He put a few things and went and together and gave it and it was just outstanding. So once this Roja as a film got locked, then I came to him and then he started doing... That, that's things. what I was glad. So, so yeah. the, what you heard first was things yeah. that he had made. Uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Right, right. Some of them... And, were, and those were created in the hope of like, releasing in Magna Sound. No, there was like documentary stuff. No, for, even for documentary, we used to spend like ages to... <laughs> Fusion stuff right, and right, right. And it was not forward. necessarily songs. It was ideas, you know, soundscapes, ideas, soundscapes, and just fantastic ones. So you you on, you had only seen Maunaragam and Nayakan. Maunaragam, Nayakan, yes. Yeah. Only those two movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, but you knew this is the man behind the movies. No, Nayakan was like so big, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nayagan came yeah, yeah. And but and I'm then saying, Talapati, but, then Talapati. But then Talapati. Okay. So I went to was that also in a pirated VCR? The, uh, no, no. Talapati thing. was the premier show. I okay. remember next to my Padmashri Radhari, you know, main school, Lucky Theatre, right? I think. Good luck. Right. Good luck. Good luck. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Good luck Theatre. And I went in, and uh, so Sharda was saying, "I'm going for my brother's thing." I said, "Who's your brother?" And and that's okay. what. You That's know, before the happened, yeah. that happened, and he was sitting on the car. And I said, "Hi, sir. How are you?" <laughs> <That's fine>. <laughs> <laughs> that so was your that first. That was Talabadi. I was okay. blown away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you uh, uh, approached him, uh, and you you have this brief for Roja. Yeah. Now, how do you did you tell him the whole story, or did you tell him a situation? What was how how was the briefing done for him? I I, I mean I must have told him the idea of the whole film. You know, right. I mean, and, and then those days I had come. You know, I mean, I'd worked enough with the Raja sir. And uh. there, when you go to Raja, you have this much window, very nice. But you have to say exactly what you want and how you are going to shoot. If it's a song situation, you have to say what you want in the BGM. Otherwise, the song will come into your hands. You know? right, right. So, I was used to preparing detailed no. thing for each song. With Rehman, I came and I was must have told him the narrated the idea of the story and things like that and planned song situation he just listened to the situation to the story he went back and then he had produced one you know i mean one scratch which was finally became chinna chinna i said which was just outstanding you know and he had done that for a situation where i had never told him that situation i had just told him a story and he Composed it for when Roja gets married and leaves the family and goes. Oh. You know, it was composed for that with uh, Nadaswaram. With every, I mean, it was just brilliant. And I, that was not a situation I had in my... That's when I started changing. With Rehman, I realized mm -hmm. that you don't have to work with a situation. You work with a film, you work with the sound, and then see how it flows into a film. So, it, it was a totally new experience. Lovely. So, it's not like... You know, because the, I would have thought that you said, I want a song, you know, which introduces this girl because, you know, I, I want, I, you know, that. But this has happened exactly the opposite yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's, I think when you get inspired by a story and, and director and, and the sensibilities, then I, what happens is I worked, you know, in the movie industry almost 12 years that time, right? So my mind would on, automatically go into how would that composer do this? How would the other composer? And that thought I would always fight and get it out. This, I don't want you. I want something new. <laughs> I don't want that thought. So for me, it was like not to look at the movie, take what's in, and how can I get a soundscape which could match, which I don't know where it is going to come, but the director would help me to place it. Lovely. So that's how you get all this, uh, you know, avant-garde, 
like out of the box ideas for many things. People say, oh, how did you think about that? If I see the scene, my influences of, you know, 20, 30 years of what mm. was before would come to me straight. Oh, I know how to do this. Right. Put a bang here, put the diminished chord here, there's a solo, flute solo. I said, no, 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 let's not do that. And, uh, you know, like working in advertising actually kind of helped me because I was watch all those advertising tapes from, you know, Spain and Latin America and France and I was like, oh my God. Look at, for that sequence, they used a song. For this chase, they used something else. So why can't we do that in movies? So the, the placement of how a sequence can, you know, light up, that changed. And that can only change when you have to cheat your brain. Like, I should not follow what instinctively comes to me because that's actually old. What could ha ha accidentally happen, happy accidents is what I was always looking for. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, just to hear, hear you explain it is, is amazing. And he will help me. If I go wild, he'll say, no, that's too wild. Like, for instance, even this, um, right now we did, okay, I, I can't reveal much. We did a song yeah. with uh, Khadija with the same lyrics. And I said, why don't we use the same lyrics for something else? And just with the piano and, and hummed it. And then I said, like, use some innocent word. Then I said, oh, let's try Khadija. And so she sang it. And I said, okay, let's try it before. He sees it and then he saw it and said, oh, I like it. And otherwise, you know, he you, took it. He took it. Yeah. OK. You want to see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> In fact, everybody keeps calling about that song. OK. Yeah. OK. Uh, I've heard from his collaborators. Like, let's say, let's take Rajiv Menon, right? He's, he told me about Bombay that his instructions are never direct. Uh, like, like he's not going to say, keep the camera there, you know, but he gives evocative uh, uh, descriptive uh, instructions to his technical collaborators, like like uh, I want the camera to eavesdrop on something, or I want the like camera to be like a person, or something like that. How, how did that Roja brief come to you? Is it like a like a you know was 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 there just that storyline, or was there like like little these things that triggered certain things in you? Like apart from that, uh, I mean. I, I know I'm asking we, you to we, go back a long time. No, no, we but... worked more almost like friends, strangely. Okay. After a while, you know, there was no, mm -hmm. I'm Mani Ratnam, you're a newcomer. He didn't treat me like that. You know, I would play him some stuff. I said, I like this. Why can't we use in movies something like this? And he'll play me, a, you know, like a Spanish opera or something. I said, why can't you create something like this? And and this is really cool. When I find something cool, I will ask him, I'll, I'll tell him, can we use this? You know, this kind of a thing. And so it was mutual in a way. But I know that I could go wild and he will control what, right. <laughs> what's needed and he'll throw off all the unnecessary stuff. Right, so right, right, he was right. good in curating my wild ideas. <laughs> nice. Did you adjust easily from having music sessions during the day to having them at night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually it was uh, only now he's very nice to me and he sends me early back <laughs> what from is early the studio. These days? Early he sends me around 10, 30, 11. So Before that's... we used to go till 4.35, 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> but I think the what comes out at that time, sometimes it's so blissful that it's quiet and it's 3 o'clock in the morning and he works with his headphones. So you're there, you can't listen to a thing. <laughs> and you're there and finally he gets up, he gives you the headphone and he walks out. Now I think even that stopped. No, yeah. <laughs> now I got more, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Now he's a little more open about it. So you actually hear him yeah. uh, listen to what you're playing. Now it's strange. There are many, so many rooms. I got another room with the piano with the <laughs> this thing and bring that idea to an assistant and he said, I got chorus on this. So it's more, before there was only one room. Right. And so sometimes, you know, I don't want people to react. Immediately. It's, yeah. I'm just putting the sketches. Like if this happened because of advertising. You know, advertising all this young copywriters to come. And you just play three, oh, that sounds like Janaganamana. <laughs> I said, wait. And then I said, no, this is the only way. All of you go out. And they'll be talking, right? So when you put headphones, so that I got used to that intimacy of, you know, being like, like a mother's home. Mm -hmm. So you create something and give it. Nice. So you would stay till, let's say, two o'clock or three o'clock, just listening would, to nothing, yeah. just reading some magazine or something like that and wait for... Uh, the thing to come out. Yeah, that's yeah. that's an image. Yeah. 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 That's really an image. You know, the <laughs> thing with creativity is you can never put an end to. You suddenly get an idea, and I'm like, hey, who's there? Just call. Who's awake? Can you call a chorus? I've got this idea. The moment I say no, no, let's pack now and get, come tomorrow, it's gone. Tomorrow's another day. Vibrations are different. 
the passion is different yeah. and the ideas are no i don't think it's a good idea but when you do it immediately i think 95% it comes correctly it manifests into what we are thinking so i always feel that this but it's it's cruel sometimes right yeah. so younger people are okay older people are like oh my god what is he doing <laughs> can you give me an example of a song where you were really convinced that this was the way to go and he was probably initially reluctant and then you convinced him there are many many songs of them yeah What's up? Can, can you give me an example? I, I don't know whether I can give it. But lots of them, you know, I mean, sometimes we have to go with some try, trust him absolutely, you know. So sometimes when I'm not so sure, sure, but if he's sure, he will just proceed with it. You know, he'll not insist that this is right, but he'll take it further and further and then show it to you. And you know that it's working very well, you know. Right. I mean, my apprehension is because I've heard it at the very early stage. I don't know. how it's going to be fleshed out and he does that and it's like unbelievably good so when you hear it you also kind of meant at that point a mentally kind of at least a raw picture is forming in your mind of the shoot how you were going to shoot not it at all, not, not at all. all i'm just listening you're, you're to music you're purely music. listening only to the music some these days that's what i was saying that i don't even know where in the movie this is going to f- fall into place at that stage he not necessarily composing for a situation he does it for a film right he does a score like that he does songs like that and then we see which would it organically falls into place somewhere you know and sometimes the the, the composition gives you an idea how you can take it right you right. know so it's a it's a blend which happens this is the first time i'm actually hearing of this is beautiful because just for example you you hear of this vast pony and selvan soundscape you, that you've got to do and then you're like okay let me tinker around with uh, so for in, in another universe a parallel universe uh, pony nadi could have been used for another situation that the tune is that is that what you're saying like uh, no for that certain things i think yeah it has to be superseded <laughs> okay okay so you said we need yeah. a song to drive the movie let's so let's do a young song okay so we said okay let's let, because it's a serious subject let's have some fun in the beginning then we'll go to all the killing So I said, well, let's talk about women and let's talk about dance and all the things which are not going to come later. <laughs> and so that that was right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but generally the idea is that you create these situations for soul. Soul, for instance, that song uh, was created for a situation. Uh, no, no, it was not. Okay. So no, that I just was, came like tunes. Tw- yeah, just tunes that came. And then when you said, okay, I could probably use a song there, you 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 use that that right. that situation. Yeah, uh, yeah we the, just look at it. So I go back to him and says, "Do you think this will fit in this way?" Wow. You no, know, and then he treats it for that. For that specific know, situation. For that specific oh. thing. Wow, this for, is. For example, uh, Kannal ne. Huh. He had composed. I mean, it was just amazing. But you no, know, when I heard the first time. He had composed it for the Uire situation. Okay. Okay. The tune was for that, and we heard it, and I heard it, and I was you no know, with the cassette non-stop from his studio to home, and I was totally in love with it. And then I asked him, "Can we use it for the initial thing and try something else for Uire?" I knew this is a killer, and I wanted him to reach for something more than this for the. You know, for we re song, and you, you know, it probably takes some two seconds, three seconds to say, yeah, we can. And he treats that tune the way Karnal Ne is treated now. I mean, you compose for something, and it's completely treated with, you know, for a festive marriage. No, that was genius actually, because that kind of a situation requires a, you know, a, like very peppy marriage song where you know. But it was a melody, and it it was oozing out with love, and you know, yeah, 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 Manisha yeah, yeah. and both of them. So that was genius. <laughs> the, you mean the the part that he took that song and used it for that? Yeah, and yeah. also the way it was filmed. I was yeah. blown away when I saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's one of Rajiv's, yeah, you know, like really magical moments. So actually, there's like more to that. <laughs> so he said, um, so you know, I'm coming to this faith very recently, like three, four years. So I don't know. He said, I need some marriage chance. And I was calling it. I called Kaviko Abdul Rahman. Like, what are the marriage chants they use? <laughs> and he said, "Look, listen." And then I found, found like, okay, these are all traditional stuff. What could be special? So why don't we bring it from, like, make it more Balkan? And you know, how can we trade that and make that into Tamil? So, so I'd given a sandam to Vairmudu Sir, and he wrote Gumsukum Gumsukum Chu and all the stuff. 
And actually, we took it from the Hindi, right? Yeah. And then we changed it to the Tamil. Okay, okay, okay. And it happened that that early part that Gumsum should have seen it the way it was born. You know, it was not there when he went into the room to record. And he had this chorus. And in front of your eyes, he's getting them to do the first line, then getting somebody else to do the next one. And it's happening in front of you. Like no? uh, they were on that Atom also, same thing. Like it just, yes. I just gave the Sandam. We got the lyrics. Sometimes, you know, who's sitting there, Mr. Inspiration is sitting. <laughs> <laughs> you want to impress him. No, I mean... Subliminally, just... your mind is saying he's there. He's going to make amazing stuff. So, let's inspire yeah. him. Uh, when you make this amazing stuff or when you both make this amazing stuff and sometimes, let's say, the song is cut out from a movie or when a song is... Like, Marikurvi was used halfway, I think. And in one of my biggest heartbreaks, because I love that song, Eherate Ashiki in uh, Guru, was it started off in that train with both of them, and but then it was used in like like pieces throughout the movie because I was like, why are you getting me in trouble? I don't know. No, <laughs> oh, I, no, no, no. So I was like, like this, does that kind you know, of? No, actually, what like I've done a movie, ninety nine songs, and I've cut off sometimes half the song. So now you understand. Yeah, because biologically we want to be able to take such you know emotion, emotion, emotion. I mean, three hours we need to sit. I think you need to move on with the story unless it's a full celebration of, you know. So, I really understand that. And he cuts it off. Sometimes, you know, like, Kodi Kodi was cut. You know that Kodi Kodi was cut? Really? Yeah, mm. I was like, first time I got, oh my God, such a, you know, that song has got something. And then I said, can you just put like, eight bars of it? They said, no, no, I, want, I don't want to put eight bars, I'll put. So then, we came to the conclusion where he yeah. put half the song. But I understood that uh, if a song comes in the wrong place, people are going to get up. Yeah. yeah. They're going to get now. I no, think, no, the yeah. creative decision is, is, yeah, yeah. is finally the director. It is, hard, it is when, heartbreaking. How do you deal with it is what I'm asking. No, I, for me, if the movie becomes a hit, only, only the music goes. The mu music is hit and the movie doesn't do well. It's useless. It doesn't serve the purpose. Right. So, we need to find a balance between what to give up, what to sacrifice. Right, <laughs> right. And, and you said that right from the first, you both worked like friends and not like, like, you know, like a mentor and whatever. But have there been times when you've told him, uh, uh, you know, like, like I don't know if this movie is going to work or, you know, like, have you had doubts so like I don't that? have any kind of, I just given because I'm so grateful for <laughs> what is genius, his existence. And even if he doesn't use me, I'll still be praying for him because I'm such an awe of him. <laughs> okay, okay. After 30 years, both for you and for you, this combination has come to define a high standard. So, for both of you, does it create a bit of a pressure when getting into a film and an album of sorts? I'm standard, he's high. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> he's what? saying he's standard and you're high. <laughs> what, what is I what said, question? Shall I repeat the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I said, after 30 years, for both of you, uh, you know, the combination has come to represent a high standard. Uh, so, when you get into a recording situation for a film, does is there an initial amount of pressure that we should somehow raise the bar from the previous... There is always pressure because the pressure not from people, mm -hmm. from us. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we've done so much of stuff. If we, if we ever do something which is repetitive, from, we feel bored. I feel bored to give it to him, first of all. And he's got this uh, amazing capability of judging what tune is more interesting to you. Like Aganaga, if you take. Um, we were doing a lot of tunes. I did a lot of classical, uh, you know, raga based stuff. And I said, yeah, put that love song mode you put like in, you know, in Venjikula and uh, Mungil Kartu. Come on, let's give me, give me some love tunes. So I said, okay. So th then that's definitely lacking in this movie. So he needs that stuff. So I went on to the piano. I had like eight, nine ideas. And so we, I think Harini came in. And so we just took a voice. Uh, version of it, just la 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 and all that stuff. And then we were hearing it and then suddenly Aganaga was there. And he said, and I had another tune actually. And he picked that up. And now that, even before release it became popular, it became a viral tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, in fact, I don't think anybody at that time realized that it was actually a song. Yeah. Okay. When the movie was seen, so yeah. Let's take the PS2 anthem, right? It's, I mean, I just love it. It's, it's like an 80s uh, rock ballad <laughs> with, uh, you know, with Indian melodic lines. How does something like that come about here? Is it like, because the rest of the songs have a particular flavor and this one's like, you know. So he said, uh, AR, we need a promotional song. And I was thinking of various things, like, and then everything felt like, and also I felt like, uh, what do we make this song very Hindi friendly? Because we make in Tamil, 
it's become like a dubbing song for Hindi. So let's compose it in Hindi and we know how to do it in Tamil. We can interpret very easily in Tamil. So we approach that way. What if Arijit Singh sings this one and it could be used for promotional for Hindi, so to push it a little more. And uh, so came up with the melody and he liked it. We edited it. Then I said, what? I'd, actually, I'm working on a meta project. So I'd done a tune for that. Very Jackson kind of a thing. And I said, what if you mix these, these two? And I took that tune from there and then mixed. He didn't know about that. And he said, oh, that's a great idea. But we could never crack the lyrics. You know, we tried a lot of celebrity rappers and they came up with their own ideas and it didn't work. And then just three days before the release of that, so let's sit down and crack this. So we like he liked the idea because of the gibberish. Yeah. So we went back to that, you know, the meter and and Siva again worked till morning mm -hmm. four o'clock mm -hmm. and cracked the lyrics. And then the whole thing. Then when we put it together, it sounded like Right. And of course the whole orchestra uh, in London, what we record is fully supported by this beautiful cello playing band. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So so what when you heard that you were like, I got this. <laughs> yeah, we were looking for it and uh, just needed something which has a modern ring to it. The rest of it, the album is. See, PS2 has a lot of songs, but a lot of songs are in the background. You know, it doesn't have the screenplay, doesn't have the time to get into singing and dancing. So all of them are, you know, therefore supportive of the story. So just wanted one song which will drive and which will give a high, yeah. you know, and... Uh, when it comes on film that you feel warm about it. So that that's what we were searching for and you got it. He got it. So he put me with uh, Shad and uh, Brinda Master. So she, at, I think around 2 o'clock, she said, gave me a sword. I said, what is this for? No, no, just do something, sir. I said, you should have told me before I would have practiced. <laughs> First time. <laughs> so I just tried it and then, just, oh, you do the same thing. You're looking very natural in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just didn't want to be look corny. So. It was fun. Yeah, I'm like, you're on a throne and you're, you know, <laughs> doing all these things. And So, just clarify one thing for me, Rahman. When you say the song was composed in Hindi, uh, you mean... No, like Gunsar it's a Hindi had sensibility lyrics? kind of thing. Oh, okay, so, sensibility. sensibility. Not, you didn't have yeah. the words in Hindi. No, but that. we recorded the f in Hindi first. Okay. Yeah. You got Hindi now. Okay. The lyrics was written by Gulzar. The, only the, the rap portion that we... Okay, that was the thing. So, the, and, and that makes a difference how, because supposing the words are written in a language and you, you translate it versus, let's say you, you would write the words in Tamil, the tune would still be the same, See, right? See, the tune, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, the, the construction of the whole thing, if you look at it, it's more Hindi friendly. Even though with Tamil now it becomes like it's locked to Tamil, it was done so that it was more ease for the melodically more Hindi friendly kind of thing. Okay. In my mind, I don't know what. Okay. No. So when you say Hindi friendly, like like, aren't we in an age right now? Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but where, like, pretty much there's a cross happening between lots of languages. Correct. Uh, but the uh, thing is, you can't. It's like dal chawal. You know, like you talk about certain food, you can't suddenly re replace idli sambar with chapati. Right. Okay. Right. So certain things have to be like we want it to be big. You need to think about like, for instance, roja was all North Indian ragas. Okay. Because I didn't want to, you know, compete with the amazing, you know, South Indian uh, prowess which all the composers had. And anything I would do would sound like some other song. So purposefully, I, I took Pilu, I took Desh, I took Darbari and, um, you know, those ragas, so, which were very North Indian, which is also common to South Indian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way, I think it, it worked very well. Desh worked very well. Pilu worked very well. You know, Naushad Saab called me and said, I never heard Pilu like this. It's very simple and beautiful and all stuff that time. So in this, very similarly, like uh, the throw of the song, the throw of the singer was very Hindi friendly, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Another song is also, uh, which we changed for Hindi was the, the Thodi. It's very South Indian. And I could not imagine how that will come in Hindi, so I changed that to, you know, Yemen. And we did another song for that situation okay. in Hindi. Yeah. In, uh, when you did it in Hindi? Yeah. Okay, yeah. which song is this? That uh, Mart Mukti Do. Mukti Do. Oh, okay. Mukti, Mukti Do. Do. Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think six songs in PS1 and seven in PS2, if I'm not mistaken, roughly. The Which was the one that, that took the largest number of iterations and which one just came like that? Actually, nothing came easy. Nothing <laughs> came easily. <laughs> of all the... Because we went 
through three, four layers. The first was the very predictable how PS should sound, South Indian, Veena, and you know, Tabla Tarang and Verdangam and all the stuff. And like Karnan or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't respond to any of those. <laughs> is that this is a, I, and then I could realize that his, his movie is very ambitious and he wants this to be expanded. Now you're realizing his movies are ambitious? No, no, no. Uh, like it's, this vision. It's, I'm but, kidding. Just, because the moment yeah, yeah. you say PS, yeah. Again, you say like even that thought process of oh, Shivaji Ganesan has acted in that one and this and this and MSV and uh, K V Mahadevanji, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. all that beautiful or that immediately comes to you. Tilana Morgana yeah, yeah. Oh, that's how the music. And I say like ninth century. Who, who have I heard? It could be imaginative. It could be you know, it could have the soundscape of yet you know being grounded. So it was a conscious decision. I knew that people are going to abuse me, but I felt like for for Tamil cinema to rise above. Soundtrack is very important. And I learned this even from Majid Majidi. Like Majid did a... Um, Beyond the Club. Hindi. Oh, yeah. Is it, yeah, that film in Bombay. And he said, like, I don't want any of the Indian instrument. I want this. I want international soundtrack. And I said, why is this man? So then I realized music is an ambassador. It actually bridges an audience to realize human stories. You know? So even though we couldn't... Uh, there are certain limitations and there are some certain expectations. And... We need to follow certain cultural things, right? So we find found a balance between uh, expanding the sensibility and also retaining the core, you know, what could be Lovely. our culture. Yeah. 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 So again, coming back to it, which was the song that took the longest time? And you said no song took the shortest time, but which was particularly hard to crack, you know, like... Actually, you went to uh, Bali. And yeah, you've talked about so, you know, yeah, the monkey went to chants. Bali and, and, no, no, i done many tunes. Then I heard back and I felt like, Adi, I said, is he going to like any of those? Then he took like three months and said, I, I like this for this. And then even um, all the stuff actually from the PS1 came from the Bali thing. Okay. And then we had done one idea for Ravan. And he said, can you bring that back in that idea? You and remember? Part of it. <laughs> yeah, that's my job. You remember tunes from like 10 years, 20, 15 years ago and all that? Yeah, some tunes, I don't remember. Some tunes stay back. Okay. And it just, just keeps coming back. Wow. Know? Okay. And a very kind of similar situation in this one. It's, yeah. That was Ravan, this was Kamsa. <laughs> 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 so, okay, I said, okay, then we edited that and part of what he liked, I brought that back. This is Racha Yeah. Yes, yes. Nice. Nice. Now, both of you done two period films together. One is Iruvar and uh, the other one is, okay, PS, three PS, uh, uh, films together. One is Iruvar and then this duology or whatever we want to call it. What was the essential difference between the two in the way you conceived the music before you went to him? Yeah, I think one thing we agreed on is that for Iruvar, we were convinced that it should evoke that period, but not imitate that period. You know, not just use only those things and uh, interpret it, you know, in a different way. But I didn't know whether it could be done, but, you know, I mean, that's what we set out and he was able to do that. It had a flavor of the period and still had something modern. For me, that period is so sacred. You know, the Kandadas in uh, MS Vasunathan, Ramurthy, Kemi Mahadevan. And for me, even to do a little bit of that was so special. I respect that. Um, so lyrics and you know the tune and Pishishla's voice and all that stuff. So yeah. yeah. Like he was saying that for PS also, the idea was that that it should I mean you're trying to make a 10th century. And it doesn't yeah. No one knows what 10th century was, and we only the image that we have is the kind of music that has been done for a period film 20 years back or 40 years back, you know. I mean that itself is a modern version of what could have been a 10th century. Now, in our mind, we are stuck with, you know, being there as being authentic, you know, which is not necessarily true. So we decided not to get, you know, caught into that zone, that go beyond it and uh, try to create a, a world which can, you know, suggest but completely make this the bridge that takes it to the audience today. You right. know, I mean... Right. The modern audience, I mean, today's youngsters, you know, the music kind of bridges them between the two. Instead of sounding like an old, you know, black and white film, it has this modern today's film sound. So that was a very conscious decision. Right. So when you did uh, 
let's I'll take the oldest song in Iruvar, which is Narumuge, right? For that time, that also was a little old sounding uh, for a that would not necessarily have a youngster con that might not. I mean, ultimately, I'm not talking about what happened, but at that point when you conceived that situation and that, what what was the idea then? Was it like 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 you know you were uh, I, I, that I want exactly the way yeah, yeah. that was. Yeah, even there, you know, I mean, see, Irwer had you know one song for almost each decade. Yeah. So it kind of changes. Right. It starts with something which is led Narmuge, which is very traditional. But even if you listen to Narmuge, the kind of instruments that right, is right. used, the kind of tone, the the melody is still that you know, classical, but the way it's treated is uh, something different. Right, and, and also the voice. Also, the choice of lyric. Yeah. Like, yeah. we were, you know, we were having fun. We were, I think, sitting in Maldives mm. uh, or Bangalore. Ba uh, one of Maldives. those places. And they said, uh, there were the lyrics. Vairam Muthusa gave, gave a lyric and they said, can we push it? Can we go, you know, really old lyric, we can bring it. I said, but nobody will understand. I said, don't worry about not understanding. We understand, they will understand. <laughs> Remember that one? Yeah. I think for the, even if you take older movies, Tamil movies, 50, 60, there were no ancient lyrics in it. They were all new kind of lyrics. Where people, yeah. there's, there's always thing, oh, people won't understand, people won't understand. It's, I don't care if people don't understand. We know what they need rather than what they want. Sometimes we have to give them what they need. And what we need, what we want, the quest of looking for that is also an exciting journey. Yeah. yeah. And something similar has happened with Aganaga because I see translations yeah. on the web and people have learned those new yeah. uh, words yeah. uh, as part That's of That's nice. I mean, it gives you a chance to explore Tamil, you know. We are limited with this and we are bringing everything, the language down. And now, you know, AI has come in. We have so much of extra help from <laughs> 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 And even the Sandam. You know, Atitira and all these things, uh, Arunagiri and all those yeah, things, yeah. which we should bring it back. It's not just meant for the old people, it is meant for the normal. So the whole Devaran atom is, is actually that. Like, I was like, No, it's actually syncopation. Summer is the language which can exploit it so much. Yeah. And I said, I wanted to push it and see what Ilanga does it. And with throw, I'll just give him the sandam. I need four of these. I need five of these. I need two of these. And then he would immediately write. In a, and very fast. 45 minutes I would have three pages of that. <laughs> and I said, okay, now let's have fun, come. And we had three mics with uh, six piece scorers on each of them. I said, this is the left, this is the right, this is the center. And this is fun, no? Yeah. Now, Raimar, you are working on a script for Kamlas. And I'm not, I, I don't want to know anything about the script and you're not going to tell me anyway. But, but the point is, or, or whichever actor, at what point I know that you involve certain collaborators like Shrikar Prasad slightly earlier on because you kind of want them in on that process a little earlier, right? Yeah. Because they're going to be like, they're going to give you feedback, analysis. At what point do you bring him into the script? As early as I can. As early as uh, Shrikar and all those? Almost as early as I feel that I have something to, you know, ask. Okay. I should have something both. I think even the DOP, once I'm clear or have a vague idea of how I want it to look, then I go to them and with the air, it's easy. I can I can talk about the film, which I'm thinking of two years later also. So it's, you know, it just is, we're just discussing, we're just talking and the ideas, it's just right. there. And so, so we bring him as early as possible. Right. So then the ideas start flowing in your head, that kind of mm -hmm. a logic. Okay, cool. So that this is what... Uh, I can present. Yeah. He uh, might he might forget about it, but he'll remember sometime, and he's far away, and then get something, and then he'll send, <laughs> and he, he'll surprise you. You've said several times that you want to make songless films, but then you listen to the song by Rahman, and it somehow yeah. finds its way into the film because you just don't want to let that song Where go. Do you want to, what do you want to give my ideas again? <laughs> huh? That's how Bombay started. You know that <laughs> I want to make a twenty-day documentary kind of a movie. <laughs> no, I'm not giving my ideas, but he's always done this because. But his his song situation is the best. <laughs> he has something ethereal about it. You said that, for instance, Rasati was like, you just heard it and I was like, I need to have this in my song, in my movie, right? It's no, like actually, it's the other way around. You know, it was so good. I knew that in, it won't fit into Thidda I said, we'll save it up for the next film. You know, I mean, it's really good. It's way beyond what the film could take. But 
both rear and vairamuthu said no no this album needs it <laughs> <laughs> and i could no way justify it fully in the film you know, we tried but i think it's just an outstanding song it's something which you no, really fall in he, love he gave a like a whole canvas for me to show what i can do yeah. and i had fun yeah thrida thrida was a and big thrida, canvas yeah gave everywhere you know like you take honey saying you take many people that is their you know blueprint for music and right. it's like this when they changed my career to from something else to banking mm-hmm. to music and so we feel proud about it. yeah right right do you still, do you still feel the urge to make songless films all the time <laughs> <laughs> it starts off songs as a songs are you know uh, songs are like doing another film all together now i mean they so good you know that people like the songs and they come with that in mind you know whereas when you make a film you're making a film and there that film requires songs and it is constructed but the songs go first to the people so they hear the songs and they want to see how you pictureized it right they come the other way around you know and sometimes we can't do justice because the story doesn't let you do that much so it is every song is like a you know like a this one that you exam you have to pass when we go to the shoot for the first day of the show, song shooting i have no clue how to do it really no clue we struggle and then try to get some hold and then cross the songs are very difficult to animal has it become easier now to like because of youtube to at least convey a sense of the song or this is what you can expect in this song videos or something like that is it a nothing no clue i think it's getting difficult see the the challenges a uh, whole of 90s we go to a shop I used to wait for a Michael Jackson album mm-hmm. for five years, and then I would like wait for it, and I won't sleep for like three, four days listening to it, and then mm-hmm. I'll say it's all bad, it's it's gone, and then then third day you start humming something, and then fourth day, and same thing happened to me, <laughs> right? They would go and buy. Nobody's buying anymore. It's free. It's coming, so they can come and they can say anything. But then it has to surpass all those judgmentary things, and then go into the heart and say, oh my God, that I can hear the song again. so i think the more denial more all the adverse things that happen to music but now i think they're listening to every inch of it you know they are talking about oh listen to 2.13 to 2 <laughs> this genius and like oh my god <laughs> and then you you see all the stuff and then you require you feel like oh my god all everything is worth it all right. the time you put in all the effort you put in mixing and arranging and composing and waiting for the word to come for two months sometimes you know yeah yeah and these days they've started liking the score no just not songs they are you know into the score you started that <laughs> <laughs> they are waiting for the ps1 ps2 we are compiling it like a fat thing maybe a vinyl um record score release yeah yeah I hope so which he never liked releasing scores because he was disappointed when his score was used for something else oh for okay. tv serials or without credit no people right, used to right, that right. yeah and now they do everything they change even the faces they change <laughs> anything and but I think there are fans who who want to listen. Yeah, yeah. I Thanks. think these days they've really, I mean, the fan following for scores have really expanded. Right, right, right. Now that you brought up the topic of scores, from Roja to now, uh, have you seen any difference in the way he approaches uh, that aspect of a film? I, th- I think he is going more and more into it, and I think I think he always liked scores, and I think he gets, in my opinion, he gets very triggered by the visual. You know, I mean. moment it is there in front of him is what you know triggers him really strongly and he's been at that thrida thrida score was something which is fantastic roja score was just outstanding so i think um, now he is perly telling a story even more it's not just a score but he's with ps for example i think it's like a storytelling exercise you know right through whatever scene you have you know in addition to it's another layer that is coming out right you know so it's fantastic yeah so remember when you were talking about composing a song you said it you preferred it if you did not know too much so that your mind could really f- mm. fight all the pre existing conceptions yeah. right but with a score when you're seeing the film do you have to fight some some more to kind of uh, you know get avoid the clichés see i think when i the whole 90s i didn't know anything I didn't have a clue what i was doing <laughs> sometimes i would go with the visual sometimes i have to go against it sometimes and i would never know the total so i always see the reaction of the director's eyes you like it 
you don't like it. But then going to Hollywood, you know, it was very similar to what scoring was with the jingles. You have to go match every frame, which is a good and a bad thing. You know, they they don't like music fighting against uh, the dialogue. Whereas we like a melody going, you know, like a theme melody going on when dialogue is happening. And if you work in Hollywood, they say, oh, no, no, that's actually fighting with my dialogue. Please remove that melody. Just keep the chords. Make it like a wallpaper thing. Right. So now in this first five years after working in Hollywood, I, then I realized, I think there was something very good what I was doing before. And then something very good I've learned now. So in, even, even this, sometimes we just go with chords. And because the dialogue is very important. Unlike before, like I want, I wanted one melody on every every cue I did. That has changed. And whenever I need to bring in, like for PS1, we finished the scoring. Then last few days were there before the print. And I watched this movie and I I felt like, we did a song in the end, like so and so. I said, can we bring that back? It raises the emotion. So we, very end is when we chopped all that stuff and changed. Like almost seven places we changed. But that, when we, when we was raising the flag, we could see the gush of blood going up. So these emotional things were connected to language, to culture, and to the you know the, how people get used to it. Yeah. yeah. Rahman, you're a very positive thinking person. You want to spread peace, love, all those kinds of things. Now, when he gives you a subject that has, you know, obviously some maybe some negative emotions or something like that. Let's take Cartrivoli Day, which has an it's an abusive kind of relationship or something like that. It's one of my favorite films. So don't you know look at me like that. But are you able to separate your personal uh, yeah. uh, uh, like like feelings from the film? Is that something that you manage? I mean, that's to do? because score, music is such a. See, I've seen everything. I've, I've, my house was next to a slum, right? My 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 concrete house was next to a slum. Next to my house was dance dance master Tangapan, who Kamala Sanjeev was as an assistant. So I've seen everything from you know. And the conscious decision I, I take while I'm speaking or what I stand for, everything. So it's not that I'm very like like a Buddha. <laughs> so I've seen everything. I've watched horror films. I, you know, all the movies. So I know that as a professional, I need to deal with that stuff. Right. And as a personal choice, what I stand for is different. Right. So even when I did uh, Fire, it's a lesbian movie. Yeah. And those are not my values or, you know, what I stand for. But I feel like I stand for humanity. When somebody is pushed to a core, then I felt like, I need to do this movie because she's trying to say something very important. And similarly, the skilling and all the stuff, that's history. You can't change history. MR, with your with the actors, your your you always tell them to keep it real, keep it like as much real as possible. Is that something that you like go against when you have the music? Do you say imagine as much as you want? Is yeah. that the keep it unreal? Unreal? <laughs> I mean, not unreal, unreal, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, this is a. It's more abstract. Music is a yeah. It's a huge advantage to a filmmaker. It adds another dimension completely. It can tell a story completely opposite to what is there in the film. For example, you no. Know, Bombay, you know, in all the riot and the violent scenes, the music is crying. Yeah. It's calling for peace. The pain is felt. So, I mean, that that only music can do, you know. That another layer of telling a story can come out with music. And the more you push towards that, instead of just underlining what is already there, if that can add a text, right. then it's fantastic. The movie feels better than what it actually is, yeah, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. that that's what we look for. Right, right, right. There's a test, actually. So, if you take something which is... Um, some of the movies I see not his movies, then I see like, there's nothing happening in the movie. And then I said, no, no, that's why you're there. <laughs> what can you add to that, which, which is a sub subtext for the whole thing? And then everything changes. Right. And if you take a great piece of art, like you take Mozart's Rakim, you put that on anything. And if that lifts, then you have to, you have a competition like, oh, I have to beat Mozart. I need to, not like in a very little way, but then you say, oh, this works, if this music makes the scene work. I can definitely do it better or to what the, you know, um, the film requires right. with our cultural things, yeah. Right. Now, he's often said that every movie is a challenge. There's no such thing as a big movie or a small movie because each film, whether it's a Puneen Silvan or an OK Karmani, it's the same amount of work or hard, hardship or whatever. What, what, how is it like when you compose songs? Is it uh, 
okay, let me use the word easier. Let, is it easier to compose an Aragie versus a an Anbinvasale? There's no easier. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, easier is... I, I'm, like, I didn't they'll say, I, well, you know that the whole story of... He never told me the story. Right. He said, I won't tell you the story. Just give me seven stages of love. And so my imagination was like, seven stages of love. This is like wild. What can you do? And then I thought it's going to take me ages. But then... I just sat with uh, like a gypsy rhythm and then the whole tune came like in 20 minutes it finished and said oh my god I thought this is going to take ages for me and then he liked it so we made that whole Satarangi the whole yeah. yeah I thought it's the most difficult song to crack and that came very easily mm -hmm. sometimes you think that something is very simple and it you know mind state of mind won't you know match and you have to wait for that right can you give an example many many <laughs> <laughs> this love song is it like Aga Naga uh, as I need a love song, there's no love song. All fun stuff is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like 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 the way how you handle uh, the OK Kanwani album. It was, uh, you know, whether it's A Sinamika or Mental Manadil or, or uh, Tira Ola, there was such a range of, mm. everything was kind of love in a way, but the the tempo or the, 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 the feel was a little different in each place. And, and was there again something that came from the, the script or again from playing around? I think also evolving. I'm like, sometimes you have to drop all the things which are your, what you call comfort zone. Right. And drop, okay, my, my hand is going towards the progression set. I'm not going to do that. I've done that. Then my, uh, you know, my programming skills of playing drums, or oh, I've done that. No, I don't, I don't want that. So let me go to a different mode. And then, you know, listening and what's happening around with the international bands. Or, right. You know, and because the people, the generation is different. Right. What they listen to is different. Even though they adore the 90s, if I give the same thing, they're going to throw it away. They're going to say, this is not my wife. I like it. I respect you. But I'm going to listen to this stuff. Unless you change, you, you, you get that feel in it. And when that comes with the visual, then it, it becomes today's stuff. Right. 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 Yeah. So do you listen to uh, today's music consciously? Or uh, that is not when you're watching a film of today when you're automatically listening to the music, but you consciously listen to say what's in vogue or something like that, so that you can avoid that just like he's saying and go somewhere new. Is that something you do? Not really, not okay. consciously. I'm not trying to stay completely updated, but you, you're not cut off. Right. You know, I mean, even if you don't listen, that's enough people, people around, around you. And you yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oddly, both of you, I think, I have this theory that both of you have influenced each other in a very positive way. And in this, how I'm saying is that, see, initially, both your works were, they were, they were definitely different, but there was an immediate accessibility. And let's say with Mauna Ragam or with Halla Gulla or something like that, you know, Chikabuka Raile. But then, like one stage comes when it's on, I don't know whether it's uh, how that happened, but then you enter a, uh, a stage where, like for instance, when you say, when you see Dilse versus Bombay or Roja, Dilse is a little more abstract than Bombay or Roja. You're deliberately going into a slightly different zone and kind of creating music. And your soundscape is kind of, you're, you're suddenly hearing uh, in Lambhon Ki Daman Me, uh, you know, where it's not a humming song, you know, it's like a, there's a, there's a tapestry that's just unfolding. Uh, like like it's just like that. that it's literally like a carpet unrolling because you're 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 just it's just going like that or even uh, Mare Kurvi or, or something like that which is not an you, it's not like four bars four bars and you're you're humming it and and then you're coming to that now this can you just talk about this I don't know what to call it evolution or change or whatever no, it is I mean you know that simplicity that's what will catch with people. But dumbing down everything to what they need, what they need, or what they want, they want, will bring you down also. I mean, right. somewhere you need to play a balance. Or they want 6A to them, okay, we'll give that. And we'll also have this one. If I, if I, I can easily do like five, five, six, eight songs for a, you know, for a popular hero stuff. But then where am I as a composer? I'm just catering to what they want. They put my name, they know that something is, he's going to do something. Right. If I don't do that, 10 years from now, they're going to abuse me. Like, what did you do? You just took money and did some. So I have a kind of responsibility I feel in, within me, which which not comes deliberately, but it's uh, naturally, involuntarily, there might be something which, which of me, which my heart doesn't allow me to go to that extent, but I, I can go. <laughs> yeah. is, is that a similar reason for you as well? No. Oh. Oh. 
I think, I think... Uh, I'm not saying you're making it inaccessible. I'm just saying you, you're, you're, you're raising the bar for, for yourself. As I think of. first, you want to be different from what you've done before. Right. I mean, that is, you've done, you've told it in a particular fashion and uh, you've got it across. So if you are telling something, unless you say it in a newer fashion, unless you are going two steps ahead, then then it's your end time, I feel. I think you have to keep growing. I mean, you might fall down. I have fallen down so many times. But I think you can't be scared of it. Right. You, have, you have to be confident that you can get up and come back again. So you just try to reach for more. For instance, when we do a song which is very avant-garde, something completely different but exciting we come back to it after three months i said i think this should repeat again so that people get it better we should repeat it again the chorus should repeat it again or the pallavi should repeat it again so those changes we, we keep coming back and doing it so so that it's more accessible and if you don't do that we are you know what's special about uh the freedom we have both of us is um i can do something and give it to him and he'll say i like this but i think there's not enough of tune there we need a hope there. Like for Satya, no, right? We, the, the, we had the whole colors thing. And then he said, I don't have anything to which I can sing. It's changing constantly. The song was about that, no? different colors. Then we brought the Saki, which, which could come in between. They're like literally two different like songs. Like a hope kind of thing, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. that made the song accessible. Right. Yeah. Right. I think accessibility is very important. I mean, Otherwise, you're talking a different language. It has to be accessible, but that doesn't mean that you just given. You know, yeah, yeah. Keep it at that. You should be able to convert your thought into a language which can reach across. Right, right. That's why I said I'm not talking inaccessible, but maybe a little tougher to. Like for example, a lot of people on the internet often talk of your songs as slow poison. Have you heard that ter ter term? Right. Do you like the term at all? Or? <laughs> It's fine, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> like, but what they're really saying is, because it's, it's, it's different, I'm not, like, like you listen to Western classical music, for instance, sometimes some pieces are instantly, they come to you because they're, they're, they're very catchy. catchy. But some pieces you have, you know, you have to look for the light motive somewhere and then you catch that and then you, you, you follow the song. So you have to like work at it a little. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe, you know, that's, that's what I'm trying to say, that, that sometimes you have to work a little and so when people don't get the song, like it's not catching immediately. You know, yeah. one, one song of yours that, that, I, that I want to mention here is this uh, Simtang Karan, <laughs> uh, which is uh, really unusual because when that Mannava part yeah. comes in, it's such an unexpected slide yeah, right. into that zone. And we've heard so many songs where there's a man part and there's a woman part. Yeah. And, but this sounds so uh, like, like, like different from any of those songs. And uh, yet, I, do, I don't know if that song became... I, like, I got abused. <laughs> you got abused for that? Me and, and Vivek, both of us got abused. Oh, you did? And okay. now then it did like 50 or 100 million. Okay. Later. You got abused because it... You, because, you know, they expect a dunk -dunk -dunk straight away. And when you go away from it, and their expectations are not matched. Sometimes, for, I think the, the wrong song to release that time. You know, sometimes you have to see how to... Yeah. Finally, after all these years, what's changed in him? And what's changed in him? He got more grey hair. <laughs> <laughs> he had all black hair when he came. <laughs> I had hair. <laughs> and See, you should have done what I did, you know, like, like, like long back, you know. Now nobody knows anything. It's like, does he have hair? Does he not have hair? <laughs> so anyway, so... Raman's become a style icon. He's a rock star. Thanks, my wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, style icon. That's definitely. She's there. the one. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't even have a wardrobe, but she has for me like a couple of rooms, full of like. I feel embarrassed to see all shiny shoes and you know, jackets, and she takes pride in styling me. So nice, nice. Yeah. And you become an actor. Actor. Yeah, sword and all that. That was AI. On the throne. That was, <laughs> that was <not> right. <laughs> in the PS2 anthem. And, no, but seriously, what the the I mean, but but basically the core of him has not changed at all. As I see it, no, especially with PS2 background score and things like that. That that urge to push boundaries, to seek something more, to not let anything go without it being satisfying. No, I think that that hasn't changed at all. I think the the that search has not in any way diminished.
Right. And with him? With him, I didn't never expected him to do this. I mean, this is right. one of my, my mythological stuff or, you know, the ancient past is my favorite stuff. So I'm so glad that I was work, I'm working with him on this epic. And I had off to his guts. He's, you know, during COVID, when people are just dropping dead, he went out with the PP kit and he did this. It's incredible. I think that's one of the biggest achievements. You know, death-defying act. Yeah, it's like a trapeze act almost. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, you know. So, and getting, you know, war scenes and people and, oh my God. Right. Yeah, it's incredible. Now right. we can think that it's easy to do this, but imagine COVID with lockdown, getting all this back, getting organized. Unbelievable. Yeah, because I think even when part one came out, yeah. it had been such a long time since anything of this nature had been seen on the Tamil screen. Uh, it was like, okay, what's... Is, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? Is I was constantly happen? speaking to Ravi Verman. Like, what is it? What's happening? What's he doing? Is he safe? You know? So he would give me all the updates. Yeah. About. <laughs> but thank you so much. It's been an incredible uh, 30 years. And, 31. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> 31 already. 31, yeah. 31, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I think some of that, that, that 30 became a mark. So, yeah, but, and, and here's to many more. But most, most importantly, can't wait to see what you guys have done in Yes, yeah. too, because you know that now you can hit the ground running, yeah. uh, and not uh, you don't have to set up anything. And uh, so, all the best, and thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ungal legends are on our way. Summer AC Mela, Sirappu Virpana. Ootta chettam edhar peshakti kum nireida pisa pisa pillada Sunland Refined Sunflower Oil. Hundred percent scholarship la Wales University la padinga.